Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this video is gonna be long. As you can see at the bottom of the timeline, it's gonna be pretty long. And if you wanna see a demo of this vehicle, playing, walking around it, then go to the description. I, I added a link to it uh, that I shared last summer when this, this, car, this car was built. Um, but I have to emphasize when you listen to any, any demo video, it's not supposed to be used as a reference. So don't get your best headphones on and, and try to judge what it's like um, in real life. It's, it's a phone recording. It's just for um, sort of, you know, giving inspiration for you. Nothing more, nothing more than that. Um, but if you don't want to watch how it was built, if you're just interested in what we did in it, then just go to the description and then you can have a look at it. Um, so this monster of a vehicle that we built last June or July, roughly around that time. <clears throat> it's currently one of the three cars uh, that have been converted uh, to a 1000 horsepower monster. So then that gives a perspective to why we had to do uh, the madness um, with the aluminium rack, why we had to keep weight to the minimum. And at the end, we changed subs, you will see. Um, I will tell the story of that at the very end. Um, so normally I don't really take so much footage of, of builds. Um, you will see some footage that was, was taken purely for you guys and then uh, there will be a few added shots that were sent to the owner. As every single time I always say I give daily private updates to the owners so this way they can follow the process and especially when someone has quite a high level of um, OCD and, and wants a very particular finish um, in many ways, then I have to stay in contact with them to see you know, whether they are happy with every single move. Otherwise, like some shops, you know, only show the finished result at the very end, at the hand handover. And then that's when people can be surprised and not necessarily in the best way. I always try to avoid that. So we always communicate every day and then this way we manage to get the best result for the owner that makes him happy. Well, if he's happy, I'm happy. But quite often I would, I would do certain things differently to my taste. Um, but then obviously this is not my car and it's not me paying for it. So yeah, some of the shots were taken for him, you will see. Um, I'm just looking at the big screen, uh, putting the video together for you guys. Um, so yeah, grab a beer, find a time when you can watch all of this if you are re really interested into the details how actually the most in mo most interesting part how these two 15 inch subs were installed in this performance car um, and how we kept it super lightweight and rigid. Um, so yeah, have fun watching this long one. So it's gonna be an OEM plus uh, solution in a way that we try to keep as much factory integration and speaker locations as possible. Uh, we are going to use the factory head unit, which is pretty good with uh, Apple CarPlay. And we can get digital signal out of it with the Helix SDMI 25 box uh, from the most system. So we can get optical signal out of it straight into the Zepco HDSP5 DSP. Um, speakers up front are going to be Akiton C30AM in the sale panels, slightly customized. So that's the only piece that will give a clue about the audio system really, because the mid-range, the C100AM from Akiton is going to go to the factory door location, which is a slight compromise, but you know, in order to keep everything factory looking, uh, there's not much we can do other than doing custom A-pillars, but um, yeah, not this time. And then we are going to use the under seat mid base, actually from Harman and Carden, because this system has the Harman and Carden upgrade. And many people think that Jesus Christ, you know, what's the point to use that speaker if we use so expensive tweeter and mid range. But funnily, you know, uh, most of the factory upgrades are coming from the same place with just cosmetic changes. And the Harman and Carden speaker is pretty much the same and it doesn't sound bad. But the reason why you think it sounds bad is because the system that's running it. So once we have an aftermarket system and DSP and everything, we can retune it, it will be just fine. And then we will see if we really feel like we have to look for an upgrade, then we have to find something. But currently on the market, as far as I know, there are only two drivers, which are better than the Harman and Carden, which is the um, ESB BMW option and the Bowers and Wilkins. So 
that's pretty much it. Um, so we will see what it's like um, till then. There's no point to spend money without any reason. Uh, we are also going to use the rear speakers for uh, differential rear feel and then uh, two acoustic elegance 15 inch subs at the back and then I go to the trunk and I'll show to you what the plan is over there. So at the trunk end, um, the plan is to have the acoustic elegance 15s in trunk IB in the usual fashion. Um, let them use the airspace of the trunk and then blow into the cabin in infinite buffer configuration. At least the mounting seems to be rather easy. That brace going across is, is really handy and the floor is nice and flat all the way. It's pretty easy to seal the trunk off from the cabin and there's enough space for the sub to breathe through once the armrest is folded down. Um, then we will have the amplifiers somewhere over there. Uh, DSP possibly here, but we will see what the layout is once the trunk buffle is in place, which is gonna be rather special as well, because I'm not going to use a conventional way of building a trunk buffle using plywood or anything like that. This is gonna be rather different. Power is, is cool. <laughs> um, this car has a lithium battery and earth points connections are close. Uh, that's the factory charging cable. Well, a pair of them coming, coming back. So that side is, is really attractive. Um, the owner doesn't want too much weight added to the car. Although, yes, we know, you know, this game is, is, is what it is. Um, it comes with a weight. We don't want to sound that in the whole trunk to the extremes like we did on the AMG. Um, but certain areas must need because like this panel, you know, over here is okay-ish But then in the middle, it's just Rattling as hell the parcel shelf is not bad, but that will get a bit of treatment and There are not many holes to worry about to seal so trunk buffer should work really nicely And then I have to strip everything out to find where we can tap into the factory amplifier and speaker lines and whatnot um, and then we will go on from there well this is a little bit of an example for people who want to use the door for many speakers um, yeah you have to take the door off just to get more access to the multi-plug we were very lucky because this had an extra hole where you can push speaker cable through so we didn't need drilling but even if you wanted to use extra mullet plugs Good luck with that because you can't get to the other side. You can't get to anything here because that's the kicks in this beamer. So where you have to get to is a good three inch above the plug and you can't reach down with your fingers. Well, don't ask me how we did it with B. Uh, it was a good hour and a half to get one cable through and then forget your super audio file high-end whatever bullshit cables because they will never get through it's just pure copper you know and um, it's an absolute pain in the ass you know, the main issue is that there's only one speaker cable running for the mid and the tweeter but you want two pairs because you want them active and running separate um, and so we need the cable if it hasn't been clear yet um, and yes, even, even just to get there, to strip all this out, um, take the button release off and, and all the other things, that, that, none of that is simple, not at all. And then people are surprised, you know, why putting cables into cars takes so long? Well, this is why. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to install speakers indoors. So yeah, just a little lesson for everyone. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that you could see this foam hanging out, right? On the other side is that easy because you can get to everything from the inside. Um, in this cavity, in this three, four inch cavity, there's a huge block of foam, massive, right behind the plug. And here you couldn't even get to anything because the foam was just blocking everything. Then you think, oh, I tried to drill it through, you can't. Um, so fortunately there was a, a service uh, grommet here, uh, which is actually down here. And then you could take it out and then somehow work this foam out to gain space in, inside of inside of the cavity and we could make it happen um, also 
that's not a damage. The car was wrapped originally, it was white, as you can see. Um, so yeah, now the cable is through, it's protected. Uh, there will be a connection inside of the, the rubber boot. So if they have to take the door off, they don't have to snip the cable, they will be able to disconnect it, take the cable out here and then connect it back once the door goes on. Um, and then there will have to be a connection inside, a link running all the way back to the amps. So simple, right? Your first little private update. So today, 14 hours went into the car between two of us with Balint. Um, as you see, trunk was stripped out. Just letting you know, one trim um, clip was missing from up here. So whoever took your car apart before, they didn't take, put that back, but it doesn't affect anything, just saying. Factory amplifier is easy. It was right there as expected. And it was easy to test all the speaker wires. Um, we pop tested and measured all of them made a list as well each and every single one of them um, and we figured out what um, I was really worried about that we don't have separate speaker wires running to the front doors because all doors run from a single speaker wire and there's just a crossover for the tweeters so the mid and the tweeter in the doors uh, run on the same channel and for that reason, you know, we needed extra speaker cable in the doors. What we did today, what you can't see because we already put the cover on. But um, I'll send you a few pictures. It's, it's going to be pretty frightening, but don't panic. Your doors were taken off even when the car was wrapped. And, and we had to take the door off as well on the driver's side. Because, yeah, I took videos. When, whenever I, I'm going to share those videos, I say long footage of showing the, the whole installation, you will see. That actually your 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 doors well pulling a speaker cable through to your door has been probably one of the most painful things to do. Um, it's been easier on on passenger side, slightly easier, but driver side was an absolute pain because all the fuse board um, and and all sorts of stuff is is in the kick panel next to the accelerator pedal, and you can't get to the the plug, and it, it's been a bitch, an absolute bitch. But um, Driver's side is pretty much done. Uh, we have to finish passenger side tomorrow, but that's at a good stage as well. So all the speakers were measured. Most of them are well, all the doors, um, and there are two speakers up on the rear uh, deck as well that I don't think we will use. We will only use the, the speakers in the rear doors for your rear feel. Um, and the under seat mid base is actually a seven ohm driver. So more realistically, that's an eight ohm driver. I have no idea why. Um, we will see how much power and output we can get out of them this way because um, that's why most of the aftermarket um, solutions, the cheaper the cheaper options, they also come with two ohm coil configuration so it's easier to get more power into them. Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't sound good once we have everything up and running. So this is going to be the mounting for the Acuton C30s. As you see, the mounting ring was 3D printed to as thin as possible to give a really sharp um, edge to it so it doesn't look bulky. And it was plastic welded in from the back and then the shape was created with filler the usual way. You can see the Sharpie highlighting problematic areas that I had to go through several times, refill sand, refill sand, the usual, the usual method. And then now they are getting pegged up and sent off to the painter to get a proper finish on them to make them look like factory. Alrighty, so this is now with the amps and I'm happy now too, because now we have the copper with the red, um, it's just a question of how I, I am going to create the trim panels because we will have really neat wiring and everything with the black and red wiring and probably once the wiring is done then you will also help me to make a decision whether we want to display more than just the amplifiers or we want to have a wider cutout showing the wiring as well 
um, it will look cool for sure and as I said we won't see anything from the floor it will be all nicely trimmed out with the foam uh, which will help a little bit with um, soundproofing as well not too much to be fair because um, once we have the subs and the wall in not much noise is going to go through from the trunk to the front anyway um, but yeah this way I, I now I'm liking the the color the color coding and then yes you have to imagine the two subs the two subs with the magnets facing the back and the DSP will be floating uh, somewhere in between the magnets so we just have <laughs> enough aluminium for mounting the DSP that way 12 meters gone crazy but uh, no one can say that this is not professional because I've never seen anyone building anything like this well it's all thanks to B because it was his mad idea a long long time ago and now we can make it happen right so this is it let me know what you think and on tomorrow will be another productive day all right before I forget it I have to take footage of this part as well um, you might have seen pictures on Facebook where uh, you know I showed the structure that we were designing for this M5 um, normally yes I would just build it from really good quality plywood it's way quicker easier and more inexpensive to work with but in this car cost wasn't a factor and you know the install has to represent uh, the same performance as the car has so wood was out of the question for uh, the main mounting for anything so we use this 20 by 40 mil aluminium frame that can be bolted together and it's as solid as if it was you know welded they use the same structure for CNC machines they they use the same type of aluminium and um, so this is the main frame for the sub wall uh, that's gonna be an 18 mil plywood which is gonna cover the edges. And I modeled that area with cardboard that I'm gonna copy onto the plywood. Other than that, on the top end and on the floor, it's straight, so it's, it's rather easy. But um, in order to have enough strength, I put in a brace to the middle so we can bolt the whole plywood um, birch ply sheet uh, to this frame all over and in the middle as well, which is also going to hold the whole frame together and give even more strength to it. Uh, so it will be very lightweight yet super strong mounting uh, was rather easy in this car because we only had to add one custom mounting point at the bottom we are using oem points down there which were the oem um, hook points m8 hook points each side um, you can see one board there in the middle so that's the only one where we had to drill the top brace of the car so board goes through with the nut on the top so it supports the middle and on each side i go to the other side and it's easier to see that part so over here there are two bolts holding the rear seat lock in place so we took one of the bolts out replaced it with a longer one so it allows us to uh, use this mounting bracket and then bolt to the aluminium so we have one of these each side and the one in the middle bolting to there so this is gonna be proper rock solid so now the wall is in from the 18 mil ply and it's pretty exact once it's trimmed there won't be <laughs> a chance of any air movement going through there on the top there's a slight gap but i will deal with that uh, and at the bottom we have a gap where cables can go through to the dsp because the dsp will be on the other side but on the other side there will be a trim panel so that will sort out the the leakage so now it has to come out i carefully have to cut the holes for the speakers because actually i don't have enough distance between the frame for the cutout of the speaker but hopefully by the time it's mounted from the other side with the depth of the Buffle, uh, I will get just enough clearance to get the speakers in. Now the frame is bolted through, well, drilled through everywhere. There are only a few bolts holding the, the 
plywood buffle in place because I have to flip it around, put the subs in and then find the mounting holes for the subs. But yeah, this thing is super light. I mean, I'm gonna weigh it because uh, we had that plan to weigh everything. It's a bit of a stupid exercise to, <laughs> you know, worry about the weight, but it's not something many people do too often. So um, at least it's gonna be a good reference because normally if I build something like this, like we did in the AMG, uh, the, we did from plywood to three layers of plywood, that was easily 15, 20 kilos, it's pretty heavy. And this is, I think, maybe five. It's definitely like one third of the weight. And yeah, it's super rigid to the time. It's bought it together with the frame everywhere and then bought it to the car. It's gonna be, you know, bulletproof. Who would ever think that trimming a single buffer like this can take an hour and a half or two hours? Mm. It's some, some parts of, of any install, you know, um, are just so time consuming, people would never think, think of that. Because, you know, spraying the, the buffle and the carpet both sides doesn't take long, you wait a bit, you know, you push the two things together, then you have to cut it nicely, this is going to be the bottom, that won't be seen, and now we have cables running underneath, so I didn't trim that. Um, but when you have to trim both sides, when both of the sides are visible, then you have to be really neat with how the two sides uh, meet. And then you have to find all the holes, then you have to be careful when you spray the adhesive that you don't get adhesive going into the thread. And the other side as well, you know, the holes and the threads for, for the speakers, you have to be really careful with them. So it's, it's, it's definitely tricky. And actually, I've just realized now that I have to tap the carpet a few more places because here, um, at these places, and on the top and bottom, the speaker mounting goes into the aluminium. And I didn't cut that open yet. But over here, um, the speaker is mounted into the buffle where it's cross into threaded inserts, as you see. So, not too far, not too far now. The um, frame is going into the car, bolted in, and then this goes in, bolted through the frame. The speaker goes in, bolted in, and bolted through the frame. So, yeah, nearly there. So the IB ball is in. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, I weighed the frame with the buffle. The frame is 3.6 kilo. With the buffle, it's 5.8. So the buffle is 2.2. Nearly as heavy as the whole aluminium frame. Crazy. We are in. There are 18 boards all around holding the buffle in place. And there are four boards from the speaker mounting also going into the aluminium frame. Uh, well, four for each speaker, so that's another eight. 26 bolts holding everything to the frame. And then as I showed earlier, three bolts on the top and two at the bottom, holding it to the car. It's no gap, a tiny bit, a little bit. Yeah, a bit of light comes through, but I will feel that. On that side, it's spot on feels everything so the only place where the wave can go through is right there on the top and then on the other side of the buffle but I will take care of that and feel these holes all the way other than that the parcel shelf is really really well sealed and well insulated on the top as well with the trim on the top so you don't have to worry too much about that well that's probably one of the reasons why you know um, 5 series and 7 series BMWs and all the you know high profile cars are quiet because uh, they are well insulated and sealed so there's not much noise going into the cabin from the back well now we have a fair amount of noise with these 15 inch subs one would be more than enough for an SQ system but um, 
I, I have that attitude that it's better to have a lot of corn area with less excursion. This way you have a way more sensitive and dynamic system. You don't have to push the speakers to get uh, great output. Of course, if you want to go crazy, then yeah, you can, you can be vicious with these. But the owner is not really looking for crazy SPL, rather nice and lively, dynamic reproduction of, of bass. And this should really play low as well in this car. But yeah, I'll be sure it once it's all done. So, on to the Amprec now and then ready for wiring. It feels like forever. Um, I mean, we put in 90 hours into the car so far, building the sail panels, uh, wiring, um, the Amprec, the IB wall, plus uh, many 3D printed bits and all sorts of things that the eyes don't even see. And um, Finally, I can get a move on wiring this Amprec. Um, as you can see, it was bolted through everywhere. We also had to put in LED light into the rack, each side. We put it into the groove, into the aluminium, but that had to happen before it was all bolted together. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to put it in. You just have to extend the cables at the end now. Amps are now floating and reversed because I just couldn't see the AP range amplifiers with the ST range amplifiers the other way around it, it just didn't match at all but this way it, it makes sense makes more sense especially as the car is also red the internals of the amps are red although we have designed the perspex piece going above the amplifiers uh, for the most obvious reason to protect them we don't want anything you know getting into them or, or you know anything damaging the internals heat dissipation might be a concern for some people this way um, but I'm, I'm really positive that it should be fine because the the rack won't be completely sealed uh, if it was completely sealed then we would need fans um, but I think it will be fine it's not an SPR car and we won't push any any of the amplifiers to the edge we have plenty of headroom so okay let's do the wiring and then i'll show you how that's going dsp mounting so in the trunk we didn't have any space left so we had to bring the dsp over to this side we just had enough space underneath the wall to bring cables through and now people would worry that you know you have leakage from the subs but to the time um everything is through i will seal the gaps plus there will be a trim panel over the dsp so that will also stop much leakage coming through but anyway it's really tight down there so as per you know the style of this build um, we don't want to use anything wood uh, although some of the trim panels will be done from that but that's hardly anything so the mounting for the dsp is made from three millimeter aluminium as well um, it's riveted together and then where you see that hole on the top that's gonna be the mounting where we have uh, a bolt for the wall already into the aluminium frame behind it take the bolt out and then bolt this to it and that's going to be the platform for the DSP so the DSP can be bolted onto this as well. DSP is mounted, it's bolted through the aluminium, four points, four corners, that small piece is trimmed so when it gets bolted to the sub uh, wall then it's going to look the same and simple as that. Here we go. Alright, so quite many days passed <clears throat> since the last 
uh, day I took any footage of this craziness. Um, this is day 14 now. One more day left and then the day after it's gonna be collected. So let's see what's happening here in the wreck. I think I showed earlier how the frame for the subs was mounted and bolted into the OEM points on the top and one each side. Um, then the rack is bolted onto that with hinges <clears throat> and there's a bracket here bolting it down into an OEM board point so then the rack can't tip up, flip up. Um, but if we have to get to things then we can easily get to it. That's where we have the main fuse holder. The cover is not on it yet. We had to customize the Stinger fuse holder because it was um, kind of elongated and long. So we had to turn both sides 90 degree, have a custom perspex underneath it to make it smaller so it can be fitted otherwise. There was just no possible way to put it in there. And the power from there goes up to the rack into these fuse holders. So, Earth, Earth was, uh, the Earth uh, terminal was upgraded, so we have multiple Earth points now going down. Uh, the factory was four gauge, so we replaced that and we added an additional zero gauge, uh, taking into consideration the consumption of the audio system. And then from the same Earth point, the cable goes up to the rack. Uh, you can see that loom there, that's what we built uh, to reverse the speaker cables back to the factory amplifier, I just left it there, so it's never gonna get lost. It's not used, it's just kind of stored there. No one is gonna ever see that. So up here, from left to right, we have the first amplifier going, the Zepco ST4X SQ, running the parcel shelf speakers and the rear doors. I use the rear doors as an addition on the fader on the processor and I use the parcel shelf ones as differential rear fill. Then second amp, so that's sorry, yeah, that's six gauge cable, that's a four gauge cable running to the monoblock, which is just enough, it's fused up to 125, um, more than enough because the IB subs will never really take well, I don't know how far they are going to be pushed, but they never take as much as what they can truly handle on paper. They won't take 500 watt each, no way. So the second amp over there is the ST2000. The third is the, the big baby, the Z150.6 AP running the freeway front end. And the small one is the DSP, which is on the other side of the IB wall. So that's how it's laid out. Then we're using Stinger 8000 series RCA plugs, which are actually uh, tightening plugs. When you turn it, then it tightens up. I didn't even know for long, but once I figured out that, oh, actually you can do that with these, which is cool. Everything is labeled as you see, so it makes our life easier when the cables were routed through from the other side from the DSP. That's where all the OEM speaker cables are running behind the rack. Um, and in that section, get the lights. Yeah, we have a, a bit of a spaghetti. It looks like a spaghetti, but it's because we are using those huge connectors uh, for the OEM speaker lines um, and the smaller one for the subs. So this way, um, everything can be taken out, the whole rack can come out without undoing any cable. Should we ever have to take it out? I don't know, but we prepared for that and this way we, everything can be converted back to, to factory easily, very easily. Because that's where we have the little bits. That's where we have the Helix SDMI 25, which you can see the green cables, that's the uh, fiber cable running the most signal into that and then we have the optical cable coming out into the DSP that's where we have these beautiful connectors uh, so that side the left hand the sorry the right hand side is the factory speaker lines and then this is what we extended we only had to run an extra cable as I, as I showed it at the beginning for the mid-range in the doors 
which was an absolute pain in the ass, but it is what it is. So that's how we could integrate the factory signal and factory speaker lines and everything. And then this little panel goes back. Everything is out of the way. So yeah, this is it without the panels. Um, yeah, part of me wanted to see this aluminium frame um, and it could be cool, but the plan was to have an OEM plus system. So looking pretty factory uh, with, you know, a touch of madness, uh, which we will definitely have once I get to the stage that I can show you the finished product. And hallelujah, these little babies arrived the day before, the day before the car is given back. Oh uh, yeah, I love these speakers, but so far COVID hasn't made our lives easy and it's the factory's life. Um, but they are here, so they are going, Fritas are going into the sail panels that I showed earlier. And the mids are going into the door, to the OEM location. Okie dokie, let's feed these beautiful drivers. Crazy, crazy drivers. What a beautiful day for collection. Uh, you always see me, you know, shooting any footage when the weather is nice. And then you think, is it really UK? Well, this is UK. Drizzle and rain all day. So it will be interesting to take any good pictures outside. I can certainly not take this down to the beach, um, but we will find a nice place with the owner somewhere where we can take a few good shots before Actually, this car is going to a photo shoot to your magazine very soon, so hopefully I will have good pictures from that. Um, so yeah, quickly, let's run through what's happening. Finally, you can see the Accuton C30 is in place in OEM location where the Harman & Kardon tweeter was. It's not that intrusive this way. Uh, this is the only thing that gives any clue about your aftermarket system. Let's turn this music shit down, it's just radio. Um, actually, yeah, that's that's really cool. I counted. One, two, three doors. That's the not and push the door. Something many car has. In there. I waited, yeah, panicking. Like when the door finally they don't opened. want that shit. So the factory head unit is integrated on the most line, and it does um, Apple CarPlay, all sorts of things. Um, I will try to add a bit of a footage when the car was being tested uh, in half finished state with the Apple CarPlay, you will see it, it works really well. Um, all the factory controls work and everything, but um, we can also stream directly to the HD Bluetooth module to the processor. Um, it's that easy. Come on. Um, volume can be controlled from the source as well as from the controller as well. To be fair, if if everything runs through the head unit, then um, you don't even have to touch the controller. Nothing at all. You only have to touch the controller if you stream to it, because um, then that's your master volume. Having said that, if the controller is turned up full volume, then you can control the volume here as well. So then you just shut it out of the way. Um, simple as that. Base level um, is running through a base controller to the monoblock because you could control now sub level on the controller as well but it's just not really handy to press that while driving. So we fitted a tiny little base controller here on the seat which is very easy to reach when you drive and then you can easily turn it up and down. This way, you know, you can just reach down, you reach it easily. So we try to keep the system as simple as possible. Uh, the C100s are in factory location in the doors. You will see from the pictures from the end. I had no chance to take footage of them when we installed them, but they have custom 3D printed um, mounting rings to make sure that it's plug and play. Uh, Fitment was was pretty tricky because I think we have 1.2 millimeter clearance behind the magnet because the 
window mechanism runs right behind the mid-range so depth is, is limited but we could make it work and uh, there's clearance to the door card as well so happy days it's not simple that's for sure these sail panels were not simple either because normally sail panels click back from the front and that's it um, or some people would you know bolt it in or something but then you, you screw the door card and you don't want to do that but this one wraps around and clicks to the back on the outside as well it's very tricky when you have to put in a fabricated piece because it doesn't have the same flexibility as the OEM panel um, you know it has fiberglass in it body filler paint and everything and actually the paintwork became really good it feels like rubber it looks a bit like that too it has a matte matte uh, lacquer finish and it's really nice and soft it has great flexibility as well but I had to be really careful to put it in man I was nervous as I don't want to yeah I don't want to swear but um, it was very tricky to put them in but they look very sweet that's for sure um, so yeah as I mentioned before three-way front end with the mid base underneath the seats we integrated the rear doors as well um, and the parcel shelf as well so there are many many scenarios that you can create with this system crazy crazy car that's for sure all right let's get on with this thing hopefully I can record a bit of footage for you um, when it's playing and um, yeah another one another one going home hopefully he will be happy with it although he's got a lot of updates pretty much every day from this and to be fair this project has been one of the most challenging in a way because of the time frame we had two weeks to do it with B and we put in 200 hours together 200 hours so you don't really see that but time just flies into projects like this and we were on the phone every day with him um, sending video updates everything how things were going if he didn't like something then um, we discussed things and then we were heading the way that would you know tick his boxes um, so this way there's no surprise when he turns up and he says oh Pete I don't quite like this or that that, that panel is mm, a bit interesting or why did you do that so this way uh, you know we can absolutely make sure that he gets what he wanted well that's the thing I have to take footage of this because um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I have like 25 separate video shots of I the whole build. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, yeah, yeah. remove it. Yeah, yeah. Just um, well, guys, you could see earlier that uh, we had two acoustic elegance IB15 AU subs in this trunk. Yeah. <laughs> now this car turned into an absolute madness because um, these JBRs can truly go a little bit beyond what's required for this sound quality system. Shall, shall we call this sound quality system anymore? Uh, the quality is still good. Uh, it's still the same, yeah, but fucking once you turn these subs up, things go really wide. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we truly have now six pipes in this car. But I, I, I would have, I would have put then spotlights, you know, shining into the, to the, you know, hole on the magnet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be cool. So let's take this daily trim panel out, what you haven't seen yet, and then we have this look. Yeah, OEM, OEM plus, shall we call it. That simple switch for the lights, and it's all off. So, is it gonna be the end of this video? I don't know. Because once, once I already said bye. <laughs> and now this is gonna be the follow up after saying bye. Maybe um, you should say, I'll be back. I'll be back. Well, the car looks a bit like that. A bit of a Terminator right now. <laughs> it's absolutely mad. All right, okay, let's take it down to the beach and then you will see this car in full, full glory. So you could see that there was quite a bit of frustration uh, many times during the process of building this crazy system. Um, well, 
when when you do custom builds, um, you know, it's, it's not like doing the same thing every single time. You have to improvise, you have to be creative, um, and you have to follow the, the customer's uh, special needs. So that's that's how we, we put exactly 200 hours into this car in such a short period of time. Um, it, at least we had great weather, um, which also made the install a bit difficult because um, it wasn't quite during lockdown, it was after lockdown but we still had uh, quite strong restrictions and um, it's really interesting now watching it back more than half a year later because currently we are in another crazy lockdown in the UK um, but at least at the time we had great weather we could leave the car outside because most of the work happened on the trunk actually so um, it was just more comfortable to leave the car outside um, but um, yeah even the very last day we 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 had changes um, we had changes throughout the whole project in many ways um, so originally we had the acoustic elegant subs in the car which ticked the boxes in, in, um, in the way that you know it was the best sounding option we could we could do and it was also sort of lightweight. Um, one subs weighed eight kilo, so roughly around close to 20 pounds. Um, whereas when we had a demo, we listened to the car and and uh, we went for a tea. Uh, the owner of the car saw my home setup with the JBL subs in in my sub solution in my listening room. And then he just went, Pete, those subs are ideal for IB, right? Um, yes, they are. And then he went, why didn't we think of using them in my car? I'm like, well, originally, because when, you know, we were putting this project together, um, we were looking at like a 10 inch in, in a small box or something to keep everything lightweight. Plus he, he said he didn't want big base. So I'm like, you know, those subs were pretty light. We didn't need the box because we did the IB wall. Um, and the JBLs are double the weight. And two of them, you know, weight quickly adds up. Um, and, you know, when someone changes even even the brakes on the car to the ceramics or, or ceramic carbon or whatever that car had, um, just to save weight um, or, you know, we save weight on the wheels, on everything. Um, because when, when you take this car to, to a track and you, you want to save point, point 0.1 of a second or anything like that, then everything matters. So that's why, as I mentioned in the video, um, weighing everything, you know, while we add a, a audio system to, to this car is, is a bit of a stupid practice. Um, but I, I had to respect the, 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 the request, you know, to keep everything on minimum weight. But when, when he saw the JBLs, he asked whether we could try them, whether they would fit. We tried one uh, which fitted um, and then we put the other one in and, and once they were in, they, they didn't come out. Not that the JBLs sounded so much better in terms of sound quality, because they didn't. Um, I would still say that the Acoustic Elegance is still the best sounding option anyone can ever have um, or I haven't found anything better yet. It's very transient, sensitive, tight, as well as you know, playing the lows so effortlessly. It's it's, it's great. I, I can't really give a better solution for a great sub in a saloon car than than with those subs in IB in trunk IB. Um, and and the JBLs were close to it in terms of quality, but obviously you have higher. Uh, moving mass slightly less sensitive yes they take more power which really comes alive when you go silly with it when when you push them and and it's a little bit of a, a comparison i could say that you know um you have a great car which goes around the track um in the shortest time and it's very accurate it's it's great um but then if you want to do drifting then that's a different type of animal in its own way where you need that madness and in a way the JBR subs kind of you know they, they do that they think that box they can they can truly do the low end better uh, creating more wind and um, you know you can feel the bass a little bit more than with the acoustic elegance it doesn't mean that the acoustic elegance cannot go loud because I think it's more than loud enough 
he has plenty of headroom for a decent sound quality system to produce concert levels. It definitely has more than enough output. Um, it can move enough enough air. 215s can, can do slight hair tricks, so it's capable. But the JBLs just do a little bit more and and they also look mean. You know, once they were in the trunk, we were like, wow, okay, this is what this car actually needs. And knowing that this, this car was also going to a photo shoot that I, I haven't uh, seen the pictures of yet. The photo shoot happened not long time ago, actually. Um, so hopefully we will see the car in a magazine very soon. I think it's going to the BMW Performance magazine. Um, so yeah, overall, just, just a crazy project, a beautiful car, oh my lord, you know, sitting in it when I was taken out for a drive, it's, it's mad, I can't compare it to anything else. The E63 AMG uh, was quite something, but this BMW is, is just mad. Um, but yeah, it was, it was great, great challenge to, to, to do this build, uh, even at those really tough times during um, COVID are still you know facing covid hopefully you're all staying safe guys it's just it feels a bit like it's never ending but what can we do um yeah so this is it i, I finish it here too much talk and, and i'm sure some of you are are going nuts that pete just goes blah 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 my usual stuff um but that was a lot of a lot of stuff in this you know and and hopefully it helps you give an inspiration um, seeing different methods, how you can you can do fabrication, or or just simply understanding what goes into such a, a crazy project. And and if you plan one your, yourself, and getting it built by someone, me, anyone else, it doesn't matter who it is, wherever you are around the globe, you can see that you know this is this is what it takes. It's it's not a simple job, not at all. And you know we didn't even do custom fabrication for the front speakers really other than the tweeter if if you want custom a mid-range location fabricated um well with the mid base in these bmws there's not much you can do really um you can't do kicks as you could see but you know everything adds up all, all the time adds up and then it goes even further and then it becomes really pricey not if if this was cheap it wasn't um but hey ho you know work hard play hard i always say that so this is it i finish it now subscribe guys subscribe to the channel because i can see that 63 percent of you who watch these videos are not subscribed so you don't know what you miss you miss the next video and it might just be something that you are very interested in a car or a system so please subscribe feel free to share these videos and, and feel free to comment i always appreciate your comments and i try to answer whenever i can Normally I only see the comments in the first week after that, somehow I just don't get all the notifications. I don't get um, notifications of the latest comments um, and yeah, I may not respond, but yeah, feel free to, to, to comment because I, yeah, you know, it's always good to, to know what you think about it. Um, I'm done. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.